All right, welcome. Welcome to those watching live and those uh, watching the recording of the video. My name is Kyle Kusinose. I'm the director of the Jones Institute, and I'm here with Brian Tucky, the developer of Fascial Counterstrain. And the reason why we're here uh, is to give you guys the changes and updates and information about the debut courses uh, going into 2024. Uh, so first, to recap, 2023, we had three new instructors take the uh, entirety of courses this last year, and it looks like we're going to have two more instructors doing that next year, too. Um, so, Brian, anything that you want to say about that, just to give the students sort of a, a heads up on who they'll see in those courses? Yeah, so everyone is uh, aware that, you know, we continue to expand uh, internationally, and the, the number of courses continues to uh, roll out, which is a great thing. Innovation is always good. Um, but of course, that necessitates me stepping back in some areas uh, just to, you know, free myself up to to develop these classes and teach the advanced classes. So um, out of the TAs that were, you know, experienced and had gotten great feedback and had also expressed an interest uh, to eventually teach, you know, we've been kind of grooming, uh, you know, several people to take over the classes. Many of them you guys already know. So Kim Braun co-taught uh, Visceral with, with Tim and did a great job. She'll be taking that over next year, although she will be co-teaching with me again next year. Um, and then, of course, we had Michael, Michael Wangsness take over periosteal class, and we co-taught that last year. And despite some massive technological snafus, Michael still kept us cool and did a great job there. Um, and then, of course, we had uh, Kyle just took over our... Uh, MSC cartilage class a few weekends ago and uh, also did a wonderful job and you know we'll be doing that more time uh, next year and then he'll be off to the races and then last but not least with Shannon Arndt who also did artery class for us and uh, Shannon you know aced it and you know reviews were fantastic um, and you know she had already been an experienced instructor as well so those classes are all going to be eventually uh, taught by those individuals just like uh, LV is taught by Greg and since LV is now into two classes, uh, Greg is going to be teaching LV2 and some of LV1. And uh, we're going to have Christine Wood gradually phase into also teaching LV1. So it takes a little pressure off of those classes, which may end up being taught uh, you know, twice a year each. And of course, internationally, Greg travels to Australia, et cetera. So some exciting uh, news there. And, and again, this model of, of having... Uh, TAs, you know, who have, you know, heard me speak ad nauseum in these classes and TA them uh, taking over the classes and and really becoming experts in one or two systems has uh, really worked out, you know, beyond my expectations. And I'm pretty excited with the model going forward. And that's actually, that's a good little segue into the LB1, LB2 conversation. Uh, we have had some questions over whether LB1 is a prerequisite for LB2, um, and it is. Um, the way that that course is designed, it's, it's a perfect flow from fascial foundations into LV1 as far as the skill development goes, and then into LV2. Uh, what we've done strategically as far as the schedule goes is put two LV1s before an LV2 each calendar year. So if you've taken F1 or you plan on taking F1 next year, the first one's March 15 through 17, then you'll have two opportunities to do LV1 before then getting in, into the LV2 course. Um, to finish this year, we have one course left. It's this weekend. It's the fascial counterstrain for the adipose system. Um, and then that was a, a full course. Uh, I think it sold out kind of instantly as soon as we released the schedule last year. Uh, I think we're having teaching um, over 100 students in that course here this weekend. So what we did next year is we put that course first. So for any of you guys that did not get into adipose this year. I think Kyle froze on us. Oh, did I freeze? Hey, Kyle, you froze, bud. Yeah. Could you hear me or no? Uh, no, just go back about 30 seconds. Okay. Adipose, yeah. So for anyone that did not get into Adipose this year, uh, we did offer, we are offering that course first next year. So it'll be February 23rd through 25th. So we'll hopefully get all of you guys that are up to speed within the curriculum and waiting for that next course uh, into that course early on. And then next year, we're also debuting the diagnostics course. Uh, Brian and I had a conversation um, a while back where uh, I was telling him this, the amazing part of these courses is they're technique heavy. 
and we give people game-changing techniques right away compared to other advanced courses that are like advanced diagnostics of the shoulder complex. And then at the end of the day, the treatment is still TheraBand rows and extensions and external rotations. Um, and Brian made a comment at that time that, you know, that was our strength and it's, it's become our weakness in some ways because we have so many techniques now. So it really necessitated this diagnostic course that Brian's developed. And I'll let Brian uh, talk about that course now. Yeah. So what I've, I've seen over the uh, last several years is that there are a large group of therapists that really have an arsenal of six, seven, 800 techniques, and they're just confused and, uh, you know, frustrated trying to use it in real time. Where do I start is, is the question that I, that I get all the time. Um, obviously you can't poke all those tender points and knowing all the secondary tender points, obviously that's not something you want to try and do, but even in the cranial scan world, um, you know, by the time we get through, you know, the curriculum, you're going to be in 70, 80, 90 different cranial scans and sub scans. So that becomes cumbersome as well. So what, you know, we started to teach uh, over time, as you guys know, is some of these additional assessment techniques that kind of allow you to triangulate into the problem, taking four or five different assessments quickly. Um, the first of those, of course, was the joint oscillation testing or the motion testing. And then, you know, gradually started to uh, add in things like touch inhibition and, you know, even really the, the subjective itself, uh, you know, is, is very valuable if you know how to use that. And we started to piecemeal show early versions of this for, you know, three, four, five years, um, you know, four or five different people teaching it, you know, here and there at lunch, you know, you know, in the back of a truck somewhere or whatever. <laughs> um, so pretty soon I'm, I'm, I'm hearing all this, you know, well, that's not how I saw it stuff going all around. And, um, we tried to do something, you know, to pretty much bring things together at convention last year. Um, but in the end, you know, I, when I looked at it after convention, um, this can really be done in a, in a two and a half day class and be something where we go through all of the joint oscillation testing on day one, which was the previous motion testing. Then day two is just, you know, kind of the, the latest version of the touch inhibition. And it's, it's a version that I, I have not shown exactly to anybody. It, it's something that uh, is really the way that I personally do it now. Um, and it really involves understanding the physiology behind touch inhibition and, you know, what I call key segments. So, you know, when you look at a complex patient, again, which is you know, the, the world that I live in every day, you can start off with your, your segmental touch inhibition and you're going to find 15, 20 different segments that are restricted, you know, when you first start and you can try, you know, T8 to L3, L3 to C4, and you're going to, you're going to find yourself ping ponging all around. And it turns out when someone has that many segments is because there are key segments that neurologically can affect many segments. So understanding what they are, why they're key segments, focusing very carefully in on them. Um, then when do you segue in your extremity tension testing, I call it, and, and how do you do that exactly? to check fascial chains uh, in the extremities impacting in. And then I even take it to a, to an, a third step and I've actually made a very uh, a nice flow chart. Um, if all that still hasn't given you the answer, then you have key segment special tests and, and things that will uh, rule out NCS and rule out NCS of bone, NCS of cartilage, um, ruling out upper motor neuron involvement. And in some of those cases, you know, you may come away with the answer that this patient is a little bit beyond your skill set at that moment. Um, but it, it will really consolidate things for you. It puts structure into it. it, it we all use the same terminology. Uh, for example, you know, a lot of people are saying AGR and other people are saying, well, what does that mean? How is that different than a key lesion? And, and then what is an SGR? And in reality, an SGR is a segmental greatest restriction, which always is due to an area of greatest restriction. So if your knee is the area of greatest restriction, it still impacts a segment neurogenically. So you start off by finding the SGR. And so, you know, there just needs to be structure to the whole thing. And at the moment there is not. So that's uh, day two. And by the end of day two, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to do this in the most complex patients quickly, um, answer all those questions that I've been hearing for, for several years. And then day three, so day one, again, really is uh, the motion testing that is been taught at convention. Uh, if you've taken convention, you know, then you just shoot your certificate to the JI and, the, and they'll give you credit for having taken the course already. 
um, and then you get a, a discount to go through the updated one because the, the day one you've already had. Um, so day two, we'll go through, you know, all that key segment and sequential touch inhibition and extremity tension testing. And then we'll start into scar tissue. Okay. Again, scar tissue uh, really is something that, you know, I rolled out during COVID as a concept. And then we progressed it, you know, behind the scenes and, and various versions are being taught. A lot of you are out there doing what I would call uh, myofascial release indirect and calling it counter strain, which it's not. Um, there is a counter strain version of even type three uh, scars and where you actually find tender points and you find scans and you find stacks. And so I'll, I'll teach that version and uh, with a fallback version of going into the myofascial release world if you don't know enough tender points. Um, and then day three is a bit of a certification uh, preview, you know, and just some things that, again, need to be taught like uh, really, how do you how do you do a good subjective? You know, how do you know a peripheral patient from a spinal central patient from a supraspinal patient? Um, red flags, right? When do you uh, say uh, no? I'm not touching you. You need to go to the ER. Um, you know, again, it's not something we've really taught consistently and needs to be done. We will also go through some difficult areas of surface anatomy uh, of the cranium and body where people get bogged down, um, and also go through the IIS article in the fashion that is uh, necessary to pass certification. So if I say to you, um, tell me exactly how IIS is formed in the body. Don't, don't regurgitate the flow chart of the paper. Tell me how it happens in the body in the order of insult. And very few people can do that. And so we'll make sure you understand how to do that. Um, and then go through some, some other you know, things on day three, um, like how to, how to you know, measure a leg length discrepancy um, you know, quickly identify how many millimeters that is and which side it's on. Just some things that, you know, you know, I've taught piecemeal through the years. So anyway, it is not a repeat of any class. Some parts of it will be repeat for those of you who went through uh, motion testing, um, but some parts of it will be new and, and everybody will uh, really kind of be brought up to the same speed, same scientific background, same structure and same terminology. And uh, yeah, you could send somebody who's in their second, third, fourth class to this diagnostics class. Um, would be a great time to take it, you know, in that first three, four, five classes. And then again, anybody who's, you know, stuck with, uh, you know, eight, 800 tender points and not sure where to start, it's again, a great class for you as well. So just logistically, if you took diagnostic at convention this last year, um, at the Jones Institute, we have that, that list of people, um, and we've already given you like the membership to it on our side. So, uh, the repeat, of course, discount for that should already be um, on your account. And when you process the registration, either this year or, or next year, um, that discount will be automatically applied. When we first were talking about scheduling this course, uh, you know, we talked about maybe there are not being a, a huge demand for it and only needing two different locations. So we we're going to do one in Frederick and one in San Diego. And as it uh, got closer, I started thinking like, this is going to be a little bit bigger than I think we thought. So we added two more locations and all four locations sold out. Um, so we are going to be opening up more locations. Um, we're going to do it right and we're going to do it slow. So if you're um, not registered for the course at all and you want to, or if you're registered for a course on the West Coast and you live on the East Coast, just, just hold tight. There's nothing that you need to do right now. As we open up other locations, we'll reach out to you guys individually to give you the opportunity to uh, register at a location that's closer to your geographic region. Okay. So that's diagnostics, really exciting new course next year. Uh, the other, uh, we, yeah, we should probably mention, uh, I, I didn't say, so on convention years, this will likely be taught at convention and, you know, replace a lot of the things that we, we started last year on non convention years, it'll be taught through the JI. Right. So the other change to next year's curriculum, and this has been a, sort of a long time coming, is the revamping and reorganization of the neural curriculum. So we're going to have next year a FCS Neuro A for our autonomics and cranial nerves, and a FCS Neuro D uh, for the dural and somatic techniques. And I'll let Brian discuss sort of the uh, reasons behind the change and what to expect in those courses. Yeah, so all of this is really, uh, we're always looking, you know, at the JI and, and you know, counter strain in general globally. We're looking at, you know, continual improvement, making sure that the learning experience is is easier going forward. We're, we're really thinking about future students at all times. So 
Um, I, you know, we apologize for anybody who's, you know, frustrated by the transition at times, but, um, you know, in, in the end, it, we just want to make the product as good as possible always. Um, and in the end, you know, when we started with the nerve classes, uh, you know, there were obviously uh, techniques like gray rami, things that were discovered along the way. And, uh, you know, I had decided to really organize the classes, you know, T7 up, T8 down, because clinically you tend to, you know, see head, neck, upper extremity people or, you know, low back, pelvic leg people, foot people. Um, and then as some of these subsystems came in, we literally just put it in labs where we had space. So over time, I realized that, uh, you know, what that did, it, it led to redundancy in the lectures. So we end up having to do autonomics lectures on both sides. We have to do, you know, uh, you know, obviously some somatics on both sides, the, the scans, you know, you're doing scans in two different places. Um, really difficult to teach and, and very confusing for the student base, although, you know, many of you did did very well to absorb it. But uh, so so that understanding and realizing that uh, now that I am working all the way into the upper parts of the central nervous system, um, I realized, you know, that the the lecture itself is inadequate to prepare you guys for the for the future brain work. And then there have been many new techniques developed, um, many recently, as I've spent so much time working in these difficult cases, that there's just no room for. So with that in mind, uh, a complete restructure uh, designed to, you know, consolidate the lecture material so that we only do the lectures uh, in one class. We can go in depth, we can put things in order and teach all the autonomics together um, is really the way to go and allow me to add, uh, you know, the new things that as, as is indicated. So for example, in the autonomics and cranial nerve class, um, you know, what what's changing just even the lecture aspect, again, you know, much more in depth into the cranial nerves. You know, you, for example, saw all the parasympathetic ganglia that were rolled out where they were stuck in nerve two classes. And, you know, I, I talk to people about those and they don't really understand them. You know, if I said to people, which one of the parasympathetic ganglia is related to the OM, you know, oculomotor nerve, you know, and they'd be like, I don't know, or which one, is, which one's related to the facial nerve or, you know, which one is related to the glossopharyngeal nerve. Um, and what exactly, exactly are they, you know, and, and do they, how do they scan? Uh, these are questions people can't answer. And that's not your fault. That's our fault, but the way it was taught. Um, but also it turns out like cranial nerve row. Okay. That's not a scan. Cranial, cranial nerve row is us poking a bunch of tender points in a direction. It's a directional tender point scan. Well, there is a cranial nerve scan. So I'll show you the cranial nerve scan uh, and the cranial nerve scar scan. So you can check them all very quickly like that. Um, we will be adding, uh, modifying the techniques. For example, all the eye techniques of the cranial nerve row, um, you know, I don't do through the eye anymore. When, I, when I'm working with infants and young children, they, you know, it's too dangerous. They don't keep their head still. So I've modified them all to be done through, you know, the sphenoid, et cetera. Um, we're all the gang, we're all the, the nuclei of the brainstem. Where, where are they? You know, I have a whole chart to show you exactly where the nuclei is in the brainstem. So if you're doing an eye technique of like the trochlear nerve, you're headed to the trochlear nuclei. Uh, understanding that a cranial nerve uh, from the eye to the brainstem is actually the lower motor neuron part of that. There's also an upper motor neuron part of that. Okay, so you have, you know, the primary motor cortex down to the nuclei, nuclei to the eye. So there's a two nerve system. So there's just so much of the of the concepts and you know what you're really doing that people you know didn't grasp because of the way it was presented. Um, the idea of a central autonomic network. Okay, so what is the central autonomic network? Well, your fight or flight response does not start at T1, right? Your T1 does not see the lion. Your eyes see the lion, and it goes you know into the uh, you know the hypothalamus and into the amygdala, and it, it propagates down via pre-autonomic neurons to the preganglionics. So just the idea of, you know, what am I exactly doing and, and where does the sympathetic response start? Again, things that people just aren't grasping. And in order to treat at the brain level, you know, we need to have these concepts, um, you know, firm and really understand them. And then like there, there are new branches, like for example, the vagus nerve branch to the inner ear, the, the vagus branch to the meninges. Uh, there are vagal branches to the adrenal gland, kidneys. There are preganglionics to the parasympathetics, uh, PS two, three, fours. So there's things that just, you know, will be added, uh, not to mention, you know, again, structured in, in such a, a nicer way for, for the learning experience and to teach, by the way. So that'll be uh, autonomics and cranial nerves, as Kyle said. And then when we get into uh, the new nerve two class, you know, the dura, 
um, and somatics, there are some major developments there technique wise. Um, first is the dural tube. So I, I, I realized, you know, over the years, people with tethered cord syndrome, um, people who had even had the tethered cord surgery, uh, you know, they many times did not respond. So, you know, why when they do a, a foraminotomy and they cut the phylum terminale, did these people with tethered cord not have dramatic relief in, in many cases? What well, turns out that there are anterior and posterior uh, meningeal epidural ligaments that functionally uh, create about five different loops of dural tube beyond C1, C2, beyond the coccyx. And it is an amazingly powerful group of techniques. Um, when it's dysfunctional, it actually pulls the brain uh, down into the brainstem and you get physical compression of the medulla and the pons. Uh, it can cause, of course, a, a pressurized head, but also problems related to the medulla, which is, you know, affects pretty much everything in the body. And the, the wonderful thing it turns out is that particular uh, dural tube sequence, it is very well tolerated by the, by the toughest patients and they need it. Um, so it's something we can stick right in the beginning nerve process. And uh, that particular class is gonna be a mandate that you at least assume that uh, before you go to the brain, okay? Because in addition to these techniques that are must understands, not just must haves, um, all the new, new dura techniques, it turns out that uh, the dura is missing multiple things that were super important. And I just have what I call new dura techniques when I document it. Um, and it's the Christigalli, the vertical tentorium, the horizontal tentorium, uh, the aud auditory nerve sheath, the, the optic nerve sheath. And those, when treated in that fashion, wipes out everything of the old dura, except for the sphen sphenobasilar, uh, the SBF, uh, SBEs, the nuke and the phylum. So basically uh, add, you know, five techniques, you know, keep, you know, four or five of the old techniques and you're doing 10 times more than you did before. And it, it just segues so nicely into the dural tube. So you'll find yourself, uh, you know, being able to, to deal with some of the tougher patients really early on in, in that. Um, and then again, we'll, we'll go ahead and then, you know, update that lecture the way it needs to be lectured uh, as far as first order, second order, third order neurons. So you understand what you're doing. Um, and then we'll go through all the somatics and just organize that better as well. But uh, but in the end, these classes will be, you know, markedly improved. Um, we understand some of you just just took it, you know, recently. And uh, so, you know, again, you don't you don't have to take it. Um, you can zoom it if you like. But uh, I will make the, the second course, you know, mandated for the brain because there's just too much that can go wrong if you don't treat the dural tube and the dura this way. And. Um... Logistically, for for these courses, if you've taken N one or N two previously, then there is the two hundred dollars repeated course discount that will be automatically applied to these courses, even though there's going to be so many new techniques. The neuro A course, the autonomics and cranial nerves, that course can be done remotely uh, via Zoom, so you don't have to travel for that course. Um, if you don't as, as a retake, as a retake, as a retake, as a retake, yes, right, right. right. Um, but the Dura and Somatics course, that course has to be done in person um, in first time and if you're going to be repeating it. So for the next year or two years, there will not be a remote option for that course. Um, and then after that, we'll we'll probably have for a, a remote option for people that want to retake it once they've taken it in person. Okay, so yes. the, any discounts should be automatically applied um, if you're retaking those courses, okay? Um, and that'll just happen in your, in your checkout uh, page. Um, last thing or last big thing anyway, is the certification, uh, for FCS, so the level one certification the last couple of years, it's been held at convention. Um, and this year you're going to be offering it on the East coast in November. Any, any other updates regarding certification? I, yeah, I would just say, uh, you know, we're having a lot of questions as to what is in certification and, uh, you know, briefly it, it starts with a written and, you know, obviously you're going to want to know the paper. They're, you're going to want to know the rationale. Um, but there are also, you know, technique or questions related to the lecture material of the, of the six classes in certification from, you know, foundations to LV1, LV2, and then of course the three of the musculoskeletal series. So just, you know, basic lecture material from those. Um, again, if you've been through the classes, you, you use it every day, you know, you've got a good chance at, 
at uh, passing the written part if you know if you know the physiology of a lecture. Um, again, what I'll talk about at diagnostics is not so much the argument for IIS, which is how the paper is laid out, but clinically, you know, how it starts and what order all that occurs, because it's not exactly the same as the paper. Um, then we'll go through, there's a random tender point testing section. And, you know, uh, you know, Tim and I and Kyle, we all talked about these things. And, uh, you know, what what should a certified practitioner be able to do from memory? And, and we don't expect you to have every single point memorized. Um, but if we had you pull, you know, five or six uh, tender points out of those five classes randomly out of a out of a hat, you know, could you show us three of those of your choice? OK, meaning two or three of them, you're like, you know, I'm going to show you ALLs, thoracic. You know, I'm going to show you, uh, you know, the anterior you know, shoulder labrum technique and show us the scan, show us the technique, uh, describe what you're doing. And, you know, we, we have bonus points thrown in there. You know, sometimes it's a bonus question, things to help people get through that. So there's some some memorization, but you do not have to have, uh, you know, things like impact charts and all those things memorized, you know, to pass that part. Then there's an interview where we're going to try and see uh, you know, how you present yourself uh, as a practitioner and ask you some of the same questions and have you just verbalized to us, um, you know, what you're doing and how you would explain, for example, uh, the physiology behind counter strain to a coworker. How would you explain it to a patient? How would you explain it to a referral source? Um, things like that, just to get an idea as to, you know, how you're able to articulate what we're doing. And then last but not least is the, is the live practical where we will bring people in and you know, you're basically gonna to wanna to go through that whole SGR assessment, uh, find your segmental greatest restriction, and then we will have you, you know, go through the scans that are in the, uh, you know, included in the certification and say, is there anything in that certification uh, that, we, that you're required to know that could impact this SGR? And you could go through and say, yes, um, there are some periosteal things in that elbow that would affect that T23 SGR that I found. I'm like, okay, great. Go into the elbow and see if you can, uh, you know, improve that SGR. Uh, and I'll come back in a few minutes. And then you're allowed to pull out your book or your, or your, you know, a 3D model at that point and knock out some periosteum, hit the stack. We'll come back, check it. And if you get the SGR right, uh, you know, answer yes or no. There's something I could do to impact that. That's, you know, in this course curriculum or the testing. Um, change that and, you know, you can ace that, no problem. But if you can't find an SGR, um, you don't know the scans, you know, you can't identify, you know, anything uh, that would impact it. If there was something and we found something, these are all ways you could get a deduction. Um, but we're pretty, we're pretty easy on that part. You know, for example, if people blow the SGR the first time through, um, we said, hey, you know, we don't agree and we want you to look one more time and you got, you got another shot at it uh, without having any deduction. So, um, we're not there to berate you, but, you know, we're trying to find a baseline, again, of competency uh, to make sure that uh, everybody who's going to move forward into this complex material is, is ready, okay, and, and is safe. And will there be multiple certifications? I'm not sure there will be, because, to be honest, I look at it as a sampling of techniques uh, that shows me that you are serious about what you're doing, you understand the physiology, you have the skill set to, uh, you know, get that last piece that can, uh, you know, make or break a patient. And, uh, you know, if you do it properly, it, it's life-changing. You do it improperly, it's life-changing. Um, so we want to make sure you do things right. And that's going to be uh, November 8 through 10 next year in Frederick. Yep. Cool. So the only other update that I have is, is just a, a simple name, cha uh, name change. Uh, no real a massive addition in techniques here, but that's to the the formerly central sensitization uh, series, the formerly known CSS series. And we had those as CSS one and CSS two. And every time we put a one and a two in it, people think that they have to be done in sequential order. And initially it was that way, but we've opened that up so that you can take those courses uh, in any order. Um, what was known as CSS one is now going to be FCS NCS or neural crest sensitization. And it's primarily techniques of the cranial bones and cranial cartilage. And then the CSS2 course is now gonna be FCS SCG or spinal cord and global sensitization. Um, so if you see those new names, they're not new courses, they're just renamed uh, from the CSS uh, series. 
Um, yeah, we were debating making it a symbol like Prince did, but we, we decided against that. <laughs> the course formerly known as Prince. Right. <laughs> we held off from that. We held off from that. Um, that's really all the updates that we wanted to cover um, going into next year. Again, the reason why is because we could have put that in an email, but it would have been long and probably nobody would have read it. Um, so we figured this would be a better way to try and kind of disseminate this information to you guys and answer as many questions as possible. Um, this will be on Facebook. Um, so if you uh, didn't get any information, want to come back and look at it, you can. Um, and we're also, we'll email this out to our entire student base too. So we'll try and make sure everyone gets it for those that don't have social media, that don't have Facebook. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess the other thing we didn't touch on, Kyle, would be uh, for prereqs to take, you know, certification uh, mm -hmm. as far as diagnostics. So what what we discussed was that, um, you know, this first year, we told people who went to convention and everything, you know, that you could sit for certification. And, and so we're going to stick behind that. Um, you know, going forward, eventually, we'll throw diagnostics in there simply because, uh, you know, you're going to have a real hard time, to be honest, passing it if you don't take the diagnostics. So um, I recommend you, you would, you know, at least zoom it or take it again, but you don't have to. If you went to the diagnostics part of convention uh, this year, you can you can sit for it without taking the diagnostics class. Yeah, and we still have some things to figure out there as far as registration goes for the uh, FCS certification too. So just stay tuned, and we'll send out a uh, an email to everyone once we yeah. have all that fine tuned as far as exactly where you will register. Yeah, and and again, just realize uh, you know again there are a little bit of growing pains as as we you know flip things around. Um, you know we're not trying to make you take courses twice but you know you guys all know uh we wouldn't do that without value being added and uh it, there's reasons behind it um the courses themselves just even designing them now i've got you know people helping me do the syllabus side and i can take my time and and really make the powerpoint presentation the way i want it i can go i can i learned from uh you know what we taught over the years and all the new material so I can prepare you guys at that nerve one level for, for exactly what you need to know all the way up in the brain now. So, you know, it, it's, I'm looking at, uh, you know, some of these courses in the rear view mirror now, and I, I'm able to make them, uh, you know, just, just way better, you know, for, for you guys as learning experience because of that. And it's not just about the new content. And that's the last thing I want to say is that again, stop, you know, thinking that everything's about that next group of points. Um, knowing when to use these points is the key. Okay. And having having the skills, the diagnostic skills, when you get up into the brain, um, I'm telling you, I spend so much time assessing and reassessing, and you know, I do I do way less treatment. I just do because I I want to find out, uh, you know, those two, three, four things um, that the body's going to tolerate, and using inhibition and using assessments, um, just treat smarter, not harder. Okay, and, and that's what it really becomes. And if you keep you know neglecting the assessment side and neglecting even this, how much you can learn from a subjective and how much you can really uh, zero in on where the key problem is and just keep looking for the magic bullet of the next 15 points, um, you're going to continuously struggle. You're in like a measure twice, cut once. Yep, 100%. Exactly. Yeah, and that, it, it just becomes more that way as you go higher up in the CNS. So, uh, you know, again, I, I said at convention, you know, what happens we have like, you know, this huge group of, of dysfunctions and, and treatments. And then for some of us, our diagnostic window is this big, you know, it doesn't fit, right? So, you know, you need to open up your diagnostic window to where you, between the tender point, the cranial scan, the touch inhibition, the subjective, you know, you've got four, five, six different things that you're cross triangulating and, you know, you'll be able to absorb all those uh, uh, points much quicker. And, you know, if I were to hire someone tomorrow, I'd be like, you know, take three or four classes and then get into diagnostics and make sure, you know, you understand the assessment side and you have that skill set um, and you won't make mistakes and you'll, you'll be way more efficient. So as I mentioned earlier, we have just one more course this year to wrap up 2023. It's Adipose this weekend. I'll be in San Diego. Brian will be teaching it from, uh, from Frederick. So if you're taking that course, look forward to seeing you there. If not, then we're done for 2023. Uh, and we're entering the holiday season and then on to uh, 2024 after that. So um, we'll either see you this weekend or look forward to seeing you next year and I hope you have a great holiday season. Brian, anything you want to say to wrap us up? No, I think we're good to go. And uh, yeah, don't, uh, 
don't worry about not getting in like, and data pose here at the end. We'll get you guys early next year. And remember the first class is always the worst class because we make them all better as we go. <laughs> Everyone fights to get into the first class. It's like they only get better. They only get better. All right. All right. Take all care, right, buddy. Appreciate all it. Right.